Ever play hide-and-seek? With JavaScript, we can hide our elements and later reveal them based on an action. CSS has a style property called display. We can use display to hide or show our elements. To hide the element, we set the display property to none. We show the element based on the type of element, block, or inline. Here is an element that we want to hide and show, and here is its initial style declaration. Its display property is set to none, so it won't appear in the browser. We want to show this element when the user wins using our JavaScript code. Based on what we've learned so far in working with elements, any guess as to our first step? If you said find the element, you are correct. We first find the element we want to hide or show. Since in this example, the element has a unique ID, we use get element by ID. Once we have the element, we set any style property by referencing the element dot, style, dot, and the style property. In this case, the display property. And we set it to block because our section is a block element. Let's give this a try. We'll hide and show an element with JavaScript and finish up our game by resetting when the user clicks the Play Again button. Our VS Code is still here with our Guess a Number folder open on the left, and our page is running in the browser on the right, just as we left it. Let's start in the index.html file. We'll add a unique ID attribute to both our Play Again button and its section. We'll call the section ID Again Container and the button ID Again Button. We want this button initially to be hidden, so in the styles.css file, here at the bottom, we'll define a style to hide it. We use a hash to define an ID selector and select the section element by its ID, Again Container. Then we set the display CSS property to None to initially hide the button. Notice in the browser that our Play Again button is now hidden. Moving on to the index.js file, to work with the element in our JavaScript code, what's our first step? That's right, we first need to get a reference to it by finding it on the page. Since we gave the section element an ID, we'll use that to find the element. Here, near the top by our other element references, we type const play again container equal document dot get element by ID again container. Now that we have the reference to the element, we need to decide when we want to show it. In this example, we want to show it if the user wins. Scrolling down, we could put the code here in this if block, but let's instead create another function. Scrolling up, we'll declare a new function and call it display play again. Add curly braces, and let's pass it a parameter of display so we can call this function to hide or show the element. Within the curly braces, we first check that we have a reference to the play again container. Then we check the display parameter. If the parameter is true, we want to display the element. We set play again container dot style dot display equal to block. Else, if the parameter is false, we hide the element by setting play again container dot style dot display equal none. Scrolling down, we call this function from our if block when the guess is correct. We call it by specifying the function name followed by parentheses. We pass in true to show the button. Ready to give it a try? Play the game. And when you get the correct answer, the Play Again button appears. Nice. But nothing happens when we click the Play Again button. Recall what we need to do to react to a button click? Looking at the index.html file, our Play Again button has an ID. In the JavaScript file, we use that ID to first find this button. Then we add an event handler using addEventListener. When the event occurs, we call a function named start game. For now, that function locks a message to the console. We've done all of these steps throughout this course. 
Want to give the code for this a try on your own? If so, stop the video now. Are you ready to see my solution? I declared a constant for the reference to the button. I used Add Event Listener to listen for the click event on that button. When that event occurs, it calls the Start Game function. And in that Start Game function, I display a message. With that code in place, in the browser, when we win the game, we see the Play Again button. Clicking that button displays the message in the console. It works! Scrolling down, now, what steps do we need to do to reset the game? First, we'll hide the Play Again button. Since we put the code for that in a function, we call the function passing in false to hide the button. Next, we want to clear both the feedback text and the guess input element. We first ensure we have a reference to our feedback container, then set the inner HTML to an empty string. This clears the contents of our feedback div element. Then do the same for the guess input. We first ensure we have a reference to the element, but this time we set the value to an empty string. We want to generate a different random number. The game wouldn't be fun otherwise. Let's cut our random number variable and paste it at the end of our start game function. Lastly, let's delete our console.log. In the browser, let's give it a try. But we get an error. Any idea what's wrong? Look at where we are now declaring our random number. It's scoped to this function, but that number is used in numerous other places in the code. Scrolling up, let's declare the variable under our elements. Then we fix our assignment in our start game function. But notice here in the console that we don't see our random number generated for our game. Now that we've moved the call to generate our random number into a function, we need to call that function when first starting the game. We'll put it here after our variable. Are we done? In the browser, let's play our game. Put in a value too low and guess. One too high and guess. And one just right and guess. We win! Click Play Again, and our feedback and input elements are empty. Our Play Again button is hidden, and our function generated a new random number. It works! Scrolling down, now that we're done, let's be sure to delete our log statements, especially this one. We don't want the user seeing our random number. Let's delete this one as well. Play the game a bit more to try out different guesses. When you are ready, we can put this code away. Close the browser, close VS Code, and we'll go back to the slides. So, use the display CSS property to hide or show elements. Modify any element style using the DOM style object. Note that some of the JavaScript property names don't match the CSS property names, like margin left, for example. For the list of valid DOM style object properties, check out this link. With our game complete, let's look at key points for working with JavaScript on the web and plan out next steps. And don't forget to like and subscribe.